Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolf Quest. And we are here with Azran and Seamus who are actually going to be heading out to the Aspen Heights Den pretty quickly here. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get our names on so we can tell where Seamus is. And then we're gonna head this way because the Aspen Heights Den is quite a ways away and we're not gonna waste any time in getting there. Uh, now we will have to winter hunt because, let's face it, this is an incredibly long journey and there is no way we're going to make it even on challenging without some food along the way. So we're going to do the winter hunting, but we're going to do that off camera because it's going to be a really long process and uh, normally what we'll do is we'll just put it into a little bit of a montage and then you guys can watch that and get a brief summary of basically what happened. So we'll go ahead and see if we can... Uh, Hopefully get these guys set up pretty quickly here and then once we do we'll go ahead and make our way over to uh, the den again and get all set up there to raise pups and uh, to get that started. So basically a recap of Azaran's challenge if you guys haven't, uh, uh, haven't, if you guys didn't see the first episode or aren't aware of what that is, is basically her challenge is that, oh that's a fox. I wonder if we'll get to see it hunting. Let's we'll try and watch this fox just a little bit. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, is he gonna go hunting? I don't want to get too close because I don't want to scare him. <laughs> is he gonna? Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do? It? Yep, he's gonna do it. Oh, there we go, and straight into the snow. Oh man, can we get close? These guys are so cool. <laughs> he's gonna head off that way, I think. And we're not gonna try and kill him because I don't know. I like these guys, and there's not much benefit to killing them here unless you're directly competing with them over something. Uh, but yeah, these guys are pretty cool. So we're, we'll leave the fox alone, though, and head off this way. And a uh, recap of Azaran's challenge is basically she has to try and get all four pups safely from the Aspen Heights den here to the Summer Rendezvous site, all the way on the other side of the map. And if she successfully completes that challenge, then we'll potentially get a bonus of some kind of some sort of benefit for the, uh, the next seasons to come. And if she does not successfully complete that challenge, we may potentially get a consequence. How that'll work exactly is going to depend on how Wolf Quest 3 works, but um, it definitely will work something in, be it small or large. It's going to depend on how uh, the whole system is set up in Wolf Quest 3, though. So we're going to make our way up this way. Here we go. And see if we're able to... Um, oh. Seamus is getting a little bit stuck there. <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and claim the den, and then we're not going to mark territory right away. Instead, we're going to go ahead and do the hunting, and I will let, um, I'll let that, I'll let us go ahead and do that in the montage. So we'll go ahead and make this our den, and I'm going to go ahead and montage this, and I will see you guys after that. Here we go. back. 
so we did quite a bit of winter hunting and uh, actually an interesting thing happened here. So at first it seemed like Azaran and Seamus didn't quite uh, know how to work together. It was a little bit difficult for them to coordinate, uh, but as time progressed it actually uh, became clear that Seamus wasn't just being difficult, he was actually showing us a different way. So you can see that we actually have the carcasses going alongside the river and that route actually runs down towards the sandbar crossing and from there to the Douglas Fir Slopes. Now that actually is a shorter route than the one we've been taking which has been running above the old oxbow down by canyon cliffs and then from that crossing to Douglas Fir Slopes. That has been an interesting one because it brings us right through the other elk hunting ground and it has worked pretty well but it's definitely a much longer journey and so it's kind of interesting how these two work together because I feel like maybe Seamus himself was either born here or helped raise a litter here and because of that he has um he has very different he has a very different perspective on the paths you can take whereas Azran has just gone with the old family route and would have gone with the one that her family has used all this time. So Azran and Seamus have actually brought each brought their own unique experiences to the journey already and uh, the one thing that I noticed Azran was better at was hurting the elk. Uh, Seamus really didn't know what to do with that. He'd just go bolting off in whatever direction, chasing them. And we'll start marking territory here. Uh, but he'd just go bolting away and chasing whatever the elk in whatever direction it ran. Whereas Azaran has come from a long, uh, long line of wolves who have learned to actually kind of steer the elk in the direction that they're trying to move. And that's been a pretty interesting thing because that's helped quite a bit and made things quite a lot easier because then you can really direct where the elk is going to go. And so, well, they had a little bit of trouble at first, they quickly learned to work together and uh, became all the more strong for it. And so hopefully that cont will continue to help them and they'll be able to, uh, to each bring their own unique experiences to it and uh, to be able to work together and use that to their advantage. So we'll go ahead and finish up marking the territory here and go ahead and raise pups. So I'll probably, I'll probably pick out the names off camera and then just fill you guys in once we've seen them. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you what the finished names are. I won't go through the whole process on camera because again, that can be a little bit lengthy because I have a lot of names you guys have submitted. And I do take name suggestions, but I try not to use uh, names that we've already used or ones that have been used in other popular media. So if it's been in, if it's from a TV show, if it's from another YouTuber series, I will probably not use it just because I, I try to sh shy away from that and not uh, not use names that have already been used before. Um, and sometimes it happens a little bit, but uh, usually I try to avoid it if I can. So just keep that in mind when submitting names. It's not that some of those names aren't good, but if they've already been used, then yeah, I probably will avoid them. Uh, so we should be almost ready. It's usually at about 90% that uh, we go to the pup screen, and here we go, I think. Any moment now? There we go. So let's see. We have three females and one male, and let's see what they look like. We're going to be playing on Challenging, and here they are. So wow, okay, they almost all, actually all of them, all of them took after Azaran. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to pause the game. We're going to go to pack stats and I'm going to choose names for them and I'll be right back. And here we go. So the pups are Hawk, Hazel, Quail, and where'd he go? Forest. So Forest is the male and the other three are all females. And uh, so we're going to be trying to get these guys all safely to adulthood and uh, hopefully that'll help. And oh my goodness, they are all wandering everywhere, and there we go, okay. Uh, my game decided to uh, freak out slightly, but I, I think it'll be all right. Um, unfortunately, my computer likes to do the strange thing where it switches windows on me, and of course that that causes problems when I'm playing a game. <laughs> so uh, not, not the greatest thing, but it happens. Okay, yes, we're gonna need to go hunting. In fact, let's go ahead and do that, and I'm actually gonna run out to one of the further carcasses because I want to make sure that we can get some of the food from farther away while we have the chance to do so. We'll save the closer ones from wh for when we really need them. But you can see as we head down this way that the trail leads along the river, which is something that we don't normally experience. And I did space the carcasses pretty far apart. I think we should be okay because this is just going to be challenging. 
but um, hopefully that's not a grave mistake. I think it'll be all right. I don't anticipate us having problems. This is really far away. I'm not used to the carcass being so far out here. And actually, Azuran has a lot less stamina than it feels like she should. Uh, she gets tired a lot more quickly than you might expect. Um, I think she's got 50 stamina, right? Oh, yeah, let's make sure we get the pup food bar filled up. Dang it, now I'm used to wolf where it just comes out of your food. <laughs> uh, so that's not such a good thing. But let's make sure that we can get back there and we'll get uh, we'll get everything uh, everything sorted here. And I think we should be okay. Um, we just need to be a little bit cautious and uh, make sure that we don't run out of um, run out of food. We want to make sure that we always have enough on us to uh, make things work. So let's get up here and we'll finish training the pups. It looks like Seamus stayed with them and that's a very good thing. I think he went to go get food too. I'm pretty sure I saw him getting food. So we'll let him uh, let him do that and we'll, we'll keep, just keep an eye on these guys. I'm not going to feed them yet because uh, normally it's not a good idea to feed the pups unless they actually need feeding. Uh, unless you're trying to do the Grow Your Pups mission, which uh, in that case, you basically just want to feed them as much as you can, as fast as you can. So, very different tactics, but uh, very important to make sure that you're not uh, going too much to either extreme. It looks like Hazel's not getting in on the play bowing. Oh, and then she was the only one getting in on the play bowing. There we go. Please let everyone do it. Oh, Hazel didn't want to that time. Alright, you have to wait for them to go back to, uh, there we go. You have to wait for them to go back to their begging animation, I think, uh, before they're ready to play bow again. But this is what I found is one of the fastest ways to train them up is to just play bow like this quite a bit. Oh, they weren't quite ready. There we go. So that gets it up pretty fast. Here we go. Yep, and now... We have to keep watch, and I am going to go ahead and feed them now. Not all the way, but much of the way. And, oh boy, this music always scares me a little, but I don't think anything is immediately here. And this den does tend to draw cougars. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, that's a coyote. Oh my goodness. Okay, forest. All right, the coyote's right here. Okay, he's going to go this way. We can take him down, and then we'll go run and get some more food. So, there we go. Uh, but yeah, you have to watch the coyotes because they can be uh, pretty dangerous. And we also don't have any special challenges or abilities with the the, um, the Lost Tales series. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be just going with uh, whatever happens naturally. So no revivals, no, no none of that. Um, it's basically just complete the certain challenge and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> So we don't really get um, any special chances unless it's specifically a part of the challenge somehow. And that's a coyote, okay. Um, and it's not part of Azran's challenge, so we just have to be really, really careful and make sure that we don't let any of the puppies die. So that, that's one thing that's interesting about this game is that sometimes it's... like the, oh, Most of the time, if you lose a pup, it is directly or indirectly your fault. But not 100% of the time, and so they're still... Oh, no, 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 uh, definitely check that out. That's our second season of Wolf Quest, and oh my goodness, that one was a that one was something else. So definitely go check that out if you haven't seen it already. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna give me flashbacks of, of Kaya's story. Um, but yeah, so it is kind of interesting because usually in Wolf Quest, if you do lose a pup, it can uh, it can pretty much be traced back to something that you did wrong, but not a hundred percent. And sometimes it can be very hard to predict what will or won't cause problems. And so it has just enough randomness to keep it interesting, but at the same time, most of the time, it's not inevitable that you lose a pup. Usually there is some way you could have prevented it if things had gone differently, even though it's not necessarily always a direct... It's not always a direct, you did this specific thing wrong right as it happened. Sometimes it's just if you planned a little bit differently. And I tend to like that. I tend to like games where it's mostly your choice and your reactions and interactions 
that affect how well you do in a game. I don't always like games that have a lot of randomness, where no matter how hard you try, things can still go wrong. But at the same time, this game has a good blend of both, I feel, so that sometimes things can still go badly, but usually you can avert complete and total disaster, even if things are going pretty badly. Uh, but that's not to say that it ever becomes easy. And I, it's interesting because challenging is actually my favorite difficulty, uh, because on the one hand, it's not too hard, but on the other, um, for some reason, I don't even really know why. Bring it on, or uh, pretty easy never tends to be pretty easy. Uh, we actually have some some of the most problems playing pretty easy. Oh, that's a bear. Okay, I'm going to circle. And we're going to try and get around behind the bear. There we go. And bite again. And bear's going. Yep. And we have a plane coming in somewhere. Uh, since Azeran does have a radio collar, it's kind of hard to see. But hopefully you can see it a little bit. It kind of blends in with her fur. Uh, but because she does have that radio collar, then every so often we do have this airplane come by. I'm looking for it. Oh, it's over there. It's flying down by the creek there. Uh, but every so often that plane will come by and uh, be tracking us because we do have that radio collar. So we have some researchers keeping an eye on Azeroth and her pack and on uh, what they're doing. So that's a pretty cool detail, I think. Um, I really like that. And uh, it's kind of interesting because it's a very stark contrast <laughs> to the airplanes in Wolf. Um, here it's kind of just an, oh, that's, sort, that's cool sort of thing. And it's actually a really good thing because it's uh, a reminder that the researchers are uh, keeping track of the wolves and making sure they're doing okay. Whereas in Wolf, it's a huge dangerous thing. And if you see a plane, you run for your life. And it's just such an interesting difference. Um, the wolves here definitely lead a much more protective life and they face a lot more natural dangers as opposed to man-made ones like in Wolf. Um, there's a coyote, okay. I was gonna say, I don't believe there's nothing at this point in time. Open the cups are starting to get hungry, so we should go feed them. I was gonna say, after that much time, I didn't think there would be nothing at the den. <laughs> so you just really have to keep your eyes out uh, very, very closely to make sure you're not overlooking anything. Um... And that was an interesting thing, too, is that actually when I went back and rewatched the footage for Kaya's, I realized that there was one point when I didn't see something that was there. Some of you guys who may remember that may know what I'm talking about. If you guys haven't seen it, then again, definitely that was one of our, uh, one of our, our more um, dramatic seasons for sure. Um, and let's howl a little bit and try to get the pups pack affinity up a little bit here. Uh, but definitely that was one of the more dramatic seasons we've had. And uh, that was one of those things where I thought we were in the clear, and we actually weren't. Um, and we had a little bit of drama that resulted from that. Uh, so again, it's just one of those things where you have to be constantly vigilant. You have to look for danger around every corner, because you never know when something might attack you. Uh, and you have to be very, very constantly alert in this game. Uh, otherwise, bad things start to happen. <laughs> and that's, that's never good. Okay, let's get some, a bite to eat here. And we still need a little bit more, so we'll stop off at one of these other carcasses. And I think we're probably... Oh, here's the elk trail, too. Uh, but I think we're probably going to actually wrap up this episode after we get back to the den and chase off whatever is inevitably spawned up there. Uh, because it is about that time again, unfortunately. So we're going to go up here and see how everybody's doing. Hopefully they'll be doing alright. And there's probably something that's come to attack them. There's a bear. Okay, we're going to circle again. You always want to keep it in your sights, but at the same time, you got to try and get behind it. And so, oh, okay. All right, oh, that was almost close. There we go. All right, and the last one you can generally run at them, even head on, because you can bite them before they have the chance to turn on you. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, this is Jay, over and out.